guys, welcome back to my channel. Shut up and read today. I'll be doing my books I read for the month of October. It is very late, but I've been busy, so here I am finally filming this video. I feel like I said this every single time, but it happens every single time. So the day, the month that I finally get around to filming this on time will be amazing. But anyways, let's just get right into the stats for October. <laughs> So for October, I did manage to read 20 books, which is not the greatest. I feel like October has just been a very busy month and I wasn't really able to read that much, but 20 books is still not too bad. But in terms of the past few months, it's definitely less, but it's okay. And then out of the 20 books that I read, 11 of them were physical, eight of them were audio, and two of them were eBooks. And then in terms of ratings, I gave one one stars, one one and a half stars, one two stars, two two and a half stars, five three stars, three three and a half stars, two four stars, one four and a half stars, and three five star books. So if you guys were counting, you will notice I only rated 19 books, and that's because I still have one book that I finished, but I didn't rate it yet because I haven't finished the sequel, and that is Tunnel of Bones. I finished the first one, and I tend to prefer to rate the books after I finish the entire series or whatever books are out as of now, because sometimes the sequels or the subsequent books will change my ratings of the previous books. So I'm still waiting for the sequel to arrive in my Libby account, and then once it does, I can finally read it, and therefore I can finally rate this first book. But so far, I did enjoy it, but I don't know what I'm gonna rate it as of yet. So for today, I'm only gonna talk about six of the books. The first one is King's Bane by Claire Legrand. This is book two of Furyborn, and the series is technically called the Imperium Trilogy. So I'm not gonna talk too much in terms of what this book is about because this is a sequel, but this book takes place pretty much right after Furyborn ends and Furyborn is about these two women one is Riel and one is Ileana and they live basically a thousand years apart so it spans a timeline of a thousand years and there's a whole legend of the Sun Queen versus the Blood Queen where the Sun Queen is the one who will be able to save the world and the Blood Queen is the one who will destroy the world and Riel a thousand years ago showed everyone that she actually has the ability to manipulate all kinds of magic and so because of that people are wondering if she's a Sun Queen or the Blood Queen and to prove to everyone that she is the sun queen and not the blood queen she goes through a series of trials so the first book follows her trials from the beginning to the end and then on the flip side we follow Ileana who a thousand years later now works for the empire and at this point in time Ileana does not really believe too much about the sun queen blood queen legend she thinks that it is just a legend and basically a fairy tale and not true however things start to happen and she realizes that there might be some truth to it and that her life is somehow intertwined with Riel's so that's the first book and I really really love the first book unfortunately for this one though not so much I did end up giving this book three and a half stars but I think this book really suffered second book syndrome and I feel like I definitely lost interest with some of the characters and I definitely felt that the plot dragged a lot and I would say it took me about 75% of this chunky ass book for me to finally become more invested with the story and for the plot to really pick up and at the end there was this major plot twist that i was like what the fuck and and so because of that plot twist which happened about the last quarter of this book it really made me so much more invested with the story again and now i'm very excited for the finale the one thing that i would say was done really well in this book was the character development i felt that both characters riel and Ileana, changed so much from the first book i can't tell you how they changed because i feel like it's a huge spoiler but the way how they changed and who they are now in this second book was just so different and i felt that their growth and development was done so so well but I think overall I would have liked this book a lot more if it was significantly shorter I mean this is a very chunky book it is almost 600 pages which I mean to be honest it felt so much longer I feel like if this book was cut down a lot more and there was some faster pacing I think I would have enjoyed this book so much more but unfortunately though I do think that this book was not the best but regardless though I'm now so intrigued with what will happen in the final book then oh gosh this book guys was <sighs> this, I think this is my first five star read of the month and that is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So this book, for those who don't know, is about a long, long time ago in a world far, far away. 
Okay, but really though, a long time ago, a hero was supposed to save the world, but somehow failed. And now the world is now a wasteland and is ruled over by an immortal ruler called the Lord Ruler. And yet, somehow, people are still fighting and hoping to overthrow this ruler. And so this book follows two characters. One is Vin, who is a young street urchin and is somehow the key to saving the world, or at least the empire. And the second character is Kelsier, who is the leader and mastermind behind this brilliant heist. So this book has been on my TBR for a really long time now. I think this book has been out for a very long time now. I want to say 20 years but I could be completely off base here so don't quote me on that. But either way though I love this book. This book is so good. I just loved how rich this world was without it being too dense and too detailed and the characters are also so fascinating to read about. I mean Vin and Kelsier for the most part are just completely different characters. Vin is such a young, she's a teenager, she's a very young girl and she is very street smart. She has a street urchin like I said already and Kelsier is this, I want to say he's like in his late 30s or something like that, early 40s man and just the two of them are just, they're just so different yet at the same time they're so similar. So it was just really fascinating to read the two of them. They're their personalities, their interactions together, their dynamics, as well as their relationships with the other crew members. But the best part I think for this book is actually Brandon Sanderson's writing. He somehow has the ability to reveal everything without being too ambiguous, too detailed, too dense, or too telling. He does a really good job of showing it and somehow telling, but not in the sense that it feels like he's forcing you to read and understand something, but in a way that you understand along with the characters. And there's also a magic system here where it deals with metals and how they burn metals and depending on the metals that they burn, they can showcase different powers. And this whole system is actually very complex and very intricate. But the way how Brandon Sanderson introduces his magic system and explains it, it's done so well that I felt that it made so much sense. So overall, I cannot wait for the sequel. I'm so excited and I actually had to purchase it. I haven't purchased it yet, but I do want to read that as soon as possible. Okay, then the next book that I want to talk about is The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. I actually did a somewhat of a reading vlog on it. I started a new reading vlog series where I did some exploring, some reading at the same time. So I'll link that above for you guys to check it out because I talk about this book a lot more in detail in that video. So this book takes place in a fantasy world where there is a caste system and each caste has a birthright that was given by the gods I don't know how long ago. However, there is one caste that did not receive a birthright and that is the crows. Instead, they have the ability to steal other people's birthrights by using their teeth. And so because of this, they are the lowest of the cast. And of course, no one really likes them as well. And also in this world, somehow there is some sort of play going on. And for whatever reason, crows are the only ones in mute. And so because of this, they are tasked with the job of providing merciful deaths, hence the title, the merciful crow. And in return, the people, the town, the family, etc., will offer them some coins, some goods, some services, etc. for their job. And one day, Fee, who is next in line to be leader of the crows, answer a royal plague beacon. And this somehow ends up with them faking the death of the crown prince as well as his bodyguard slash body double. And the reason behind this whole fake death situation is because the crown prince and his bodyguard knows that the queen is actually trying to kill him and in doing so will overtake the throne for herself. And in return for Fee and her band of crows to help Prince Jasimir as well as his bodyguard slash body double Taven, in return he promises to protect the crows when he ascends the throne. And so begins this journey and adventure as they try to keep away and stay away from the pursuers while trying to overthrow the queen. So this book, I did end up ultimately giving it three and a half stars. I had some pretty high expectations going in and while I did enjoy this book, I didn't think it was that amazing. The magic system was incredibly fascinating and very complex, but at the same time, the execution of it was very confusing. So there's a caste system and each caste, like I said already, has birthrights. But the thing is there's so many castes and so many different birthrights and the fact that this book didn't really go into detail about how this came to be, some of the different cats. The book didn't even really do a good job in explaining some of these birthrights that was actually in this book. And so because of that, it was just really confusing. And I think that there's still so much to this book and its magic system that needs to be revealed. So hopefully this 
sequel or something will provide further information but as of now though i do think that the magic system is very confusing to me and then for the characters for the most part i did really enjoy the characters i really like fee and taven or taven however you pronounce his name i thought they were great characters but prince jasimir for the most part was just so aggravating for me i just found him to be so sheltered so naive so annoying but i would say that his character actually grew a lot throughout the book and he definitely matured as he made some choices towards the end that i definitely did not expect his character in the beginning to me but that still doesn't change the fact that i found him as a character to be very irritating in the beginning of this book or at least the first half of this book so anyways i'm still intrigued enough to pick up the sequel and i'm definitely definitely curious to find out what will happen between fee and Taven or Tavin, however you pronounce his name so the next book i want to discuss is the bone charmer by brianna shields so in this book in saskia's world Bone is pretty much everything and it is also the source of all power. She grew up with a mother who can see into the future and her mother was actually the town's designated bone charmer. And on the day of her kenning, which is a special day to determine her apprenticeship and basically her future career, her worst fear comes true when her mother tells her that her path is to become a bone charmer just like she is. And not only that, but also somehow pairs her up with a boy with a mysterious and dark past. The last thing that Saskia wants to be is become a bone charmer like her mother, and she also knows that her mother saw multiple paths for her, but somehow chose the one that she does not want. And so because of this, again, to a terrible argument which end up resulting in breaking one of the bones in the bone reading, which subsequently ends up fracturing Saskia's future into two. So now in one path, she is following the path that her mother chose for her, and in the other path her mother chose the path that she wanted unfortunately though only one future will ultimately exist and time is running out so initially when i first finished this book i thought it was not a bad book i was gonna give it three stars but the more i thought about it the more annoyed i was getting so i ended up giving this book two and a half stars i found the premise to be super fascinating and i also really like the fact that there was actually a mystery to be solved i can't go into the mystery because that is a huge spoiler but there is a mystery in here and i did not expect that and i actually really really liked it but my biggest issue, which is why I became more annoyed with it, was actually, even though the premise is so interesting, even though the whole parallel life, parallel future timeline was so fascinating, but the execution of it was not done that well and so it became really confusing for me. The issue with this is that Saskia for the most part remains constant. Like it's very clear who she is in each timeline. But the characters around her was what got me really confused because they were similar but not the same. And so in one timeline, her best friend would be doing something else. In the other timeline, her best friend would be doing something else but maybe a little bit of a change. So it was just so confusing after a while and so as I continued reading it, there were times when I was like, wait, what is going on? And I think as the book continued to, Saskia also got confused and so I became really confused because if the character's confused, I am even more confused. So I overall just, I thought the execution was not done the greatest. And not only that, but I think because of the confusion, there were so many times where I had to take a step back and try to reevaluate who was who, who was doing what, etc. And that really took me away from the story. And there's also romance in here, which I mean, is pretty typical and pretty normal for a YA book. But I wasn't the biggest fan of this romance from one of the timelines and and the one thing that got me actually so annoyed at the end was actually the ending. I did not realize that this was a series. I thought this was a standalone for the longest time. I think when it first came out, it was, I think, marketed as a standalone. I don't really know. But I was not under the impression that this was a series whatsoever. So when I finally got to the ending, I was like, wait, this could not be the end. This is a very open-ended ending and not only that but there's so many questions that are left unanswered and then i go on goodreads and find out that there is actually a sequel to this and i was like but the thing is i'm not that invested with the story to actually continue the series which is why after contemplating i was like i cannot give this book a three stars i'm giving this book two and a half stars i was just so disappointed with that ending and the fact that this is a series i was so in it for a standalone fantasy and i did not get that okay then the next book that i want to talk about is one that i'm pretty excited to talk about but at the same time i'm not because of my feelings for it and that is star sight by brandon sanderson so this is the sequel to skyward and i can't really get into it because again it's a sequel but this book pretty much takes place right after skyward or at least a few months after after spenza finds out more about the aliens that her planet has been fighting for the past i want to say 100 years or so and the truth of what happened to her father all those years ago so for this book 
most of the time I thought this was a very mediocre book I mean not mediocre but it was just okay it wasn't until the very end that really helped elevate my rating for this book so I did ultimately give this book four stars but Skyward I loved I love that book so much it was five stars so I was just kind of disappointed that this was not a five star read as well mostly I was disappointed with two things one is that there's a new cast of characters that were introduced in this book and the original cast of characters were for the most part not really part of this story so I was pretty disappointed because I love the original cast so much I love the banter their relationships together but the new cast of characters I mean I like them as well I thought they were really cool and really diverse but I didn't fall in love with them as much as I did with the original characters so that was very disappointing for me and the second reason is that I did find that most of this book to be very slow it was also very political heavy with the whole alien relationships and dynamics and politics and how humankind was somehow involved with it and it was just very political heavy and I did not sign up for a political book I think if I had known that it was politically heavy then I might have been okay with it but I didn't expect that going in I thought it was very action-packed because the first book was very action-packed it's very fast-paced there's so much action going on and this second book was for the most part I would say 75% 80% of this book was all about politics and the relationships between all the aliens species and humans and etc and then the very end the last 20 25 percent was very action-packed so the little last bit of this book was so good which is why I elevated to four stars but honestly for most of this book was just not that interesting for me so and I do want to say that the ending left me so curious as to what would happen next which also by the way I don't know if you guys know but this is actually a four book series I did not realize that I thought for whatever reason that this was a trilogy but it is not it is four books and I believe on Goodreads Brandon Sanderson mentioned that the third book won't come out until two years later which I am so disappointed by because I just want to know what happens next guys. Anyways point is though this book was okay it wasn't as amazing as the first book I still enjoyed it somewhat but it was very slow in the beginning or for most of this book actually. Okay then the last book that I want to talk about in this video is Rules of Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. So there is a legend in this book where it follows a girl called Lucy Callows who was last seen by her brother heading down a road with a man and suddenly the road that they were on disappeared. People say that this road will only open once a year and will lead you to another dimension. There are rules to follow and at the end you'll be able to find or save Lucy. So this book follows a girl called Sarah whose sister Becca disappeared a year ago. Authorities and her parents believe that Sarah ran away with a boy but Sarah suspects something else when she receives a message asking her to find Lucy Callows along with her friends and before they know it they find themselves only armed with cameras and find themselves in a dark forest among other creepy locations as they try to pass each gate slash trial and hopefully find Becca at the very end. This book was literally the perfect book for Halloween guys it gave me all the spooky and creepy feels and I did really really enjoy this book and ultimately gave it four and a half stars what really stood out for me was how atmospheric and how creepy Kate's writing is it was to the point that I was able to picture pretty much everything and felt that I too was part of Sarah and her friends part of their company traveling through the roads and passing through each gate each trial and it was just so eerie and the plot itself was actually really immersive and very diverse as well I loved how each gate slash trial presented a new set of challenges as well as being set in a new location and there were so many plot twists and turns that I did not see coming at all and the decisions that they had to continuously make was just incredible because I don't think I could have made those decisions. I also really like reading about the characters and thought that there was a lot of diversity in there as well which is always something I like seeing in books and that ending guys that ending like blew me away I just did not expect that at all I was so set on how this book will end and this book just at the very end was like plot twist and I was like uh what like what I actually had to go back and re-listen to it because I listened to an audiobook by the way and I was like wait I had to go back a chapter or two just to be like did I get everything like did this just happen and it shook me and it was done so well so anyways if you're looking for a really creepy atmospheric perfect Halloween spooky kind of book 
then this is the book for you it was so good but i am really excited i cannot wait to read another one of these atmospheric spookyish books from this author so anyways those are all the books that i want to talk about in this video let me know down below if you have read any of the books that i mentioned here which book have you read this past month that you're really excited which book did you read that you're not so happy about but as always if you like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe down below don't forget to follow me on twitter and instagram and i'll see you guys next time bye